it's definitely the time of year when everyone is looking back and reminiscing about the year, the best, the worst, the sublime, the ridiculous, the fantastic. So why should we be any different? So what I thought I would do is go through my year in fountain pens. We should get started with one of the best pens I've ever owned was gifted to me by my wife last Christmas. It was the Mont Blanc Egyptomania, a pen which really kind of shook up my whole experience of pens. It was one of the first ones that really got me out of posting because it can't be posted. I really sort of rediscovered this love for Egyptian things that I've had since I was a child. And uh, I've also went down the perfect ink rabbit hole to find an ink that matches that perfectly. So that was a super fun addition to the channel. So yes, the Egyptomania is the first pen I'll talk about this evening. It's still in my top five favorite pens. Absolutely brilliant, has a very soft, medium nib, fantastic writing experience. Doesn't have a lot of line variation, but you know what? The writing experience is so great. The design, the feel of it sort of being this vintage style pen, absolutely brilliant. One of the other things that happened this year was the Kaveco Special Collection Red Pen. Got it a few months after the Y Studio, and they look very similar cosmetically. The Y Studio being a little heavier, sort of a little bit more on the, I guess, interactive side with the way the red paint wears off to reveal the brass underneath, where the Special Collection is more of a of a set pen, but they both have facets. The Kaveco is a bit more elegant, but the Y Studio is brilliant. It snaps together and it's really, really interesting. So there's really a lot of fun in pens that sort of have a conversation with each other. I don't think they were influenced in any way by each other. It was definitely a sui genesis. But if you hold them side by side, they do have some similarities, which makes it a lot of fun. One of the other pens that I bought this year was the Platinum Kanazawa Haiku Matsutoro fountain pen. And we got into a really interesting discussion of how much of a $400 pen or $500 pen, I forget what it costs to be honest, goes into the pen and how much in the decoration. And how do you parse that out? And at what point does it get ridiculous where you're sort of getting the quality of a couple hundred hour pen and you're spending 1200 hours because the artistry is so great. I think if you want something and it brings out a quality in you or your writing that gets you to journal more, it gets you to express yourself more, then it's worth every dime because you're using it. But the uh, Kanazawa Haiku Matsutoro is a beautiful pen. I do write with it on occasion. Sometimes you just want a beautiful artistic gold pen in your hand and it's not a bad choice at all interesting we talked about um the diplomat arrow i did a video on it an interesting pen it has an almost zeppelin like shape to it it's kind of funny the diplomat symbol it sort of looks like a propeller and it just, it's right there at the end and it sort of gives this idea of an airship. Mine is green and fluted. It oddly has a little chip in the aluminum around where the cap snaps on, which is rather surprising. Um, it doesn't affect the writing or anything else, but was one of those things that sort of leaps out at you when you put a loop to a pen as I do, as a reviewer, I'm always looking at fit and finish on a pen. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. Still wrote beautifully. Is it the one in the million that you got? Or is it a problem with QC? You never really know. Another big discovery for me this year was the Pilot Kakuno. I didn't know about it. 
and I think I saw it on jet pens. And when I saw the little winky face, it was just so delightful. And I think there's something about anything that's anthropomorphized. I just love. And the pilot Kakuno has a bit of that charm. It's like this sort of Nintendo character quality in a fountain pen. And I just love it. I love it so much. Mine's blue. I bought two. Bought a blue and a pink one and my wife liberated the pink one from me almost immediately. So from the best to the one of the ones I enjoyed the least is the Jinhao 159, which I picked up earlier in the year. It's one of the heaviest pens I've ever written with. The nib wasn't very nice to me when I got it. And I don't like to do work on nibs. The 159 was a bit of a disappointment. So another pen that I discovered was, I guess kind of rediscovered, was the Pelican M200. I had had Pelicans before and they didn't survive my great pen purge, but I started to really get into the beauty of Pelican with their beautiful nibs and the beautiful design. And then the M200 was just a nice addition after my wife had bought me the M600. So the one bad thing about the Pelican M200 is that it has this Houdini-like ability to escape. It just wants to come undone and then the pen falls out and especially in a dress pocket. And I often have a pocket here and I'm, I have the bad habit of slipping a pen in there. And the M200 just wiggles around in my pocket and loves to come undone. And it's to the point when I either don't put it in my pocket, I carry it around in like my fist or I, I have it on my desk or I'm checking it constantly. So what happened was I had a very important business meeting and the M200 was in my pocket and it did the Houdini thing and it fell down point first and I just got this like bullet wound of bright black ink on my shirt and there's no coming back from that. And I had a business meeting like me, my boss, or my, and some other folks, and I had to look presentable. I didn't have anything to cover. And so I had to run out at lunch and pick up another shirt. So it was like the great pen disaster of 2022. So be careful with that Pelican M200 because it will, it will do you in. So another discovery this year was the Shown Design. Uh, pocket six which my wife bought me for my birthday very interesting pen mine is in copper it reminds me a bit of a lilliput on steroids but um very cool to have um a number six nib in your pocket and able to use if it, it's a little cold as a pen because it's just sort of a tube with a nib so design wise it's it's not as inspiring as something like the M200. So another pen that I discovered this year is the Banu Brown Orchid, which is part of the Ambrosia collection. A magical pen and a different writing experience like anything else that I've used. And what really sucked me into this pen is that it has this bouquet of flowers around the cap that look like amber and they hold the light in a really interesting way and the pen sort of brings out a more poetic quality to me it just inspires me anytime i want to sit down and maybe write a love letter to my wife or a poem or something a little more creative than just my more sort of self-analyzing journal entries definitely when I'm getting expressive, that pen motivates me. The award for the most beautiful, intricate grip and nib goes to the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. Victorian industrial look of the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen is absolutely brilliant. And it's a very elegant pen it's a pen that you can post, but they recommend that you don't because you can scratch the enamel. But 
it's a really nice writing experience. I decided to buy the Pilot E95S, but then I had to have it in the burgundy and ivory. And at the time it was sold out everywhere. So I ordered it and it came in like four months later. It came in so much later that I forgot that I had ordered it. And it was like this beautiful rediscovery. And I was almost surprised that you don't hear more about the Pilot E95S. I feel like it's this sort of slightly underrated, slightly underappreciated pen. Because one of the things that I really love about fountain pens is when you get something unique. The E95S, it's a pen that looks like it was transported directly from 1960. It has this very elegant, almost like a cosmetic product. You almost feel like a lipstick case or something when you slide the oversized cap off that then goes into the short body to make a very elegant, proper size pen. It's really great how all that works together as a design. And then on top of it, it has this fantastic gold pilot nib that's almost very aquiline and soft. I, I can't say I get line variation out of it, but it's a super fun, gentle writing experience with it. And I always find myself using one of my favorite inks in it because it's burgundy. I put writer's blood in there. It doesn't hold a lot of ink. It's such a fun, such a great pen. I just feel like everyone should own it and i feel like it's a great value for what you get it's a little over a hundred dollars you do get a lot you get a, a wholly unique design with a fantastic gold nib that gives you some of the characteristics of a gold nib it does stuff that's different than what a steel nib does so another pen that came in this year was the fountain pen Revolution Mondras, which was an ebonite pen, which is a lot of fun, and it had an architect nib, which was my first architect nib. I've never written with one, and I'll say that I wasn't missing that much with the architect nib. My style of writing and the way I write sort of makes the nib pull all the wide strokes at the bottom of the letters, and it almost looks like when you get a hair in between the tines of your um, pen, it sort of wrote like that. I'm not that great with it. I love the feel of the pen. The ebonite is really warm in your hand and it has this fantastic, almost organic property to it. So another huge highlight this year was another Grail pen. This is one that I bought and it was one of those ones where it came up and I had to make the choice, do I buy it or not? And this time I chose buy it. So it was the Mont Blanc 146 with the calligraphy nib. And this is one of the most important stories I can relate to you guys. And you know some of it if you've been watching all my videos. So my thought was that Mont Blanc was making very flexy nibs. So are they capable of marrying that with a bit of line variation? And for what I was told, they are. So I had to have this pen. I did leverage the fact that the dollar was very strong. I bought it from a company in the Netherlands. I'm trying to remember its name because they're lovely. It's something like Fonte Plumo or something along those lines. I wish great company, the dollar was strong. So I ended up getting like 25% off. So a $900 pen was in the sixes. So I got it. I did an unboxing. I was very timid about trying to flex it because I didn't know what its capabilities were. I didn't want to over flex it. So got it, but initially loved it. It's so beautiful. And then I just felt this profound disappointment because it didn't do what I envisioned it should do. And in my expectations and imaginations, I felt like it should have flexed and did some major line variation, but it's just not designed to do that. It's a different sort of tool. It is quite literally for calligraphy. 
instead of hiding that disappointment, I made an entire video about it. Now, what has happened since? And you know I do follow-up videos. Everything is a conversation on this channel. We develop themes. It's all about taking ideas and seeing where you are. You're always reevaluating. I've since started taking the Mont Blanc calligraphy courses. In doing it, I realized that that pen is a powerful, awesome tool. I just wasn't using it for what it was meant for. And now I'm going the other way. And now I appreciate that quite a bit. And just the fact that you can flex it and it comes right back and it's very responsive. And here's the funny thing too. The more I use it, the softer it's getting. So wait and see. We'll see where that pen is come springtime. Another pen was the Estherbrook Nouveau Blue in an oversize with the SD Flex nib. Now, the SD Flex nib is an entirely different animal. This one is stiffer and they don't make any grand exclamations that it's incredibly soft and incredibly flexy. But what it's great for is emphasis. It's a smooth, fun writing pen. You can do your regular handwriting. And then if you want to sign something with a flourish, have a beautiful downstroke full of wet, inky goodness, that pen will do it with alacrity. I acquired the Jinhao X159. And this was one of the big disappointments of the year. It was a pen that I really wanted to like. I love the idea of an entry level pen that has the dimensions and the general writing experience of the 149, which is one of my favorite pens. But however, I got the luck of the draw and mine was super scratchy with a lot of false starts. And I had cleaned it twice. I put in, I believe I put in writer's blood, which is a pretty wet ink. I was just really expecting something better from this pen. If I'm going to recommend a beginner pen, it has to be reliable from the start because I make an assumption, perhaps wrongly, that a beginner may not know how to tune a nib. And I don't necessarily like to tell people like the paper bag trick or the rolling trick or the little bit of pressure trick that we all do to get our nibs to open up and perform for us when we're disappointed in this regard. Because if it's your first time doing it, you can destroy a nib. Now, certainly it was $6, but still, I hold these things in very high esteem. I really liked it. I thought it was beautiful. I love the burgundy color. I really wanted to like that pen but it just let me down. I did work on it. After the video was filmed, after I did all my review, I did some more work on it and it started to open up. But still, not something I can recommend just based on the fact that pens shouldn't be hobby kits. They should come ready to use for everyone. They should have a pretty high hit rate. And anytime I ever see that, I'm going to call it out. That was a bit of a detour. I think for my pen journeys of the year. But another highlight was the Estherbrook Camden. The Camden is a really pretty pen. Mine is in the Oktoberfest finish, which is this gorgeous yellow to gold to orange. Very much looks like fall foliage. Absolutely beautiful. It also has the SD Flex nib. So I have two pens with that nib. Once again, great for emphasis. Fun to write with, absolute joy. So another really nice highlight of the year, I think. I partnered with Conway Stewart to do one video, a review, which I hope you guys saw. Um, did like a documentary on the Blitz and tied it to the Churchill pen. This is the Conway Stewart Churchill Honey Noir with a lever fill. This is like it came out of a time capsule. It has such a vintage look to it. I'm amazed they were able to produce something that is so convincingly vintage specced with the lever fill. It gives you the impression that it's celluloid. It's not. It's resin, but it's beautiful. The resin goes all the way to the nib, which is super fun. 
The bands are in nine karat gold. Fantastic lever. So Conway Stewart partnered with me to produce the one video. But guys, this is one of the highlights of my fountain pen life. It does have a Yovo nib that's gold that's um, assembled by John Soraka over in the UK, which I like because I always feel like I get bad stuff. I always feel like there's something wrong with everything I get. I, have a, I don't know if it's a persecution complex or I just obsess in the wrong places. And it just gives me peace of mind that someone with his talent has tried it and assembled it. And it's a really great nib very smooth very expressive it's a lot of fun in summation of the year the year was about you guys and i feel like i really grew and changed as a person i would have never done the video i did a few weeks back about my crazy life and how fountain pens saved me if i didn't have all of your support every week sort of reinforcing the fact that i'm okay and that i'm doing a decent job here and you guys enjoy it I wouldn't have opened up like that. You guys are holding me up and I appreciate it. Now, I can give you a little bit of entertainment, a little something to think about, a little bit of inspiration each week, then I'm doing my job and I'm happy. And I'm really, really thankful that you're there.